But first, when we put our stories on the air and online, we never know what might happen. Most of the time you see or read the story, maybe comment about it, and that's all. But once in a while, it leads to another story. 207's Don Kerrigan is here with one of those that you could not resist. Abs absolutely. <laughs> so you will recall about two years ago, uh, Kirk Craddy and I did a story about this remarkable main invention called the Lombard Log Hauler. Great and, story. And its inventor, Alvin Lombard. So that machine changed the woods industry. And it was invented, and the first ones built were at about the turn of the 20th century. That's a long time ago. So I was both surprised and fascinated when we got a call from a woman named Mary Cowan who said not only that her grandfather owned and operated one of those machines back in the day, but he took pictures. Driving that Lombard was a rare chance to take hold of history. A main invention that brought machine power to the world of logging and laid the foundation for what became a vital tool to build 20th century America. And my grandfather liked to take pictures. <laughs> so you want me to show you this? Sure. Mary Cowan may be one of the few Mainers who still cherishes her own family history with the Lombard and the old days of work in the woods. See, now he's, now Nina's is going out, going up into the woods to get the logs. Her name is Nina, they named her. Her being the Lombard. The, the, the Lombard. Lombard. <laughs> Mary's grandfather, Clarence Morton, brought the log hauler to Coas County, New Hampshire in 1911 to harvest hardwood for his family's business, Paris Manufacturing Company in South Paris, Maine. They built sleds and skis and even furniture. That's Nina. That's Nina right yeah. there. Yeah. Mary says Clarence also loved taking photos and shooting movies of the work. Lucky for all of us, because he preserved a pivotal time of change in Northern New England. And that's what they called Hay Hill. They put hay on it so the they wouldn't fall oh, for traction. Yeah, for traction because she had no brakes. Mary learned all about that history from her father, who lived in the lumber camps as a child. He even had his own pony and logging sled. I loved horses. I loved the outer doors. I loved winter. And I loved my dad's stories of what it was like to grow up deep in the woods in New Hampshire and have his own little logging operation. Pretty hard life for those grown-ups. Very hard life, but I don't think my dad knew all of that at that time because he was, he was having fun with his little pony and his little, <laughs> his little saw bill on his little sled. And the sprinkler wagon, they had to ice the roads. All to help the sleds pulled by that huge steam-powered log hauler. See, now she's coming to the landing in the woods. Yeah. And then the, the cant dog man will load, it, load logs on. Mary says she also loved her father's stories as a kid and as an adult years later. And I, I just thought that was, you know, the most amazing childhood you could have. So when she became an author of magazine articles and books for middle school age children, it was probably inevitable she would write about life in the woods. 20 years ago, Mary published this book, Timber, with lots of the same old photos. And now she has a novel, Trouble in Nathan's Woods, set in a logging camp in New Hampshire during World War I. I could hardly believe Pa bought me a horse, because I sure didn't deserve one. That's With a lead Nathan. character who sounds familiar. Nathan, who is 11 years old, he just learns that enemy spies are lurking in New Hampshire, in the woods. All of it based on the real story she heard as a child from that world more than a century ago, far removed from the lives of today's young people. <laughs> Do you think they still want to know about what was happening I, I 100 years ago? I don't know, but I'm going to tell them. <laughs> so maybe Mary Bob still gives talks and shows one. the old films at historical societies and sometimes at schools keeping alive a world that shaped who we are today. And one Mary Cowan hopes kids from a century later will still want to know.
Can't get enough of watching those old films. It's just fascinating stuff. Now, Mary's new book, Trouble in Nathan's Woods, is in bookstores in Maine now, so if you can get that. It is aimed at middle school age kids. And there's a new publisher who's going to republish her book, Timber, with all of those old photos and information about the logging industry updated to deal with things since it was originally published 20 years ago. And Rob, the there is an organization in Maine of which I'm very fond, the Maine Forest and Logging Museum in Bradley, across the river from Old Town, that's a keeper of sort of the heritage and history of those log haulers. They've got four of them. Uh, they have an event coming up on February 17th. Well, they'll run, I think, the one that we drove a couple of years ago, and they can run the steam-powered ones in the summer. It's a remarkable history. We've got information on the website, uh, linked to, to Mary's information, and also to the museum. It's pretty fun. How much footage does she have? Well, uh, that was hard to tell. She's got she's got a good a good five minutes of uh, of old film and then a bunch of of uh, photos. As you know, having started out in TV when you did, uh, we when we used to shoot film, uh, one two and a half minutes of film cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he would shoot it, and it was sixteen millimeter film. And I guess they probably she. They save the highlights. It's amazing. Yeah, that's why that film is so precious and so wonderful to see. And I don't know how much other film footage there is of that. It's, it's historically yeah. valuable. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks. Don, thank you.